Just two days after confessing to killing Ureles Rivera, Ryan Brunn is dead. The Department of Corrections says the 20-year-old killed himself in prison. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. We have team coverage of today's shocking developments. Fox 5 George Franco is live in Canton with reaction to Brunn's death. But first, Fox 5's Justin Gray is live outside the prison in Jackson with more details on just what happened. Justin? Well, Tom, GBI agents are here at the Georgia Diagnostic Prison right now. They tell me they are processing the scene, also interviewing corrections officers and any possible witnesses. Prison officials tonight not telling us whether or not Ryan Brunt was on suicide watch, but they do tell me he was held in isolation away from the regular prison population. She followed you. Yes, sir. It was just on Tuesday that 20-year-old Ryan Brunt calmly confessed to a Canton courtroom how he molested and murdered 7-year-old Jarellis Rivera. Afterward, he was immediately transferred here to the Georgia Diagnostic Prison in Jackson to begin his life sentence. But prison officials tell us they found the convicted killer dead in his cell of an apparent suicide this evening, just two days later. Mr. Brunt was found unresponsive in his cell about 4.15. He was transported to a local hospital, and that's where where he was pronounced dead of an apparent suicide at about 5.37 this evening. Um, right now, the GBI is currently investigating this case. Prison officials won't say whether or not Brun was on suicide watch or how he killed himself. They do confirm to us he was being held in isolation. GBI agents are now here at the prison interviewing guards and witnesses and processing the scene. Jarellis Rivera's mother was in court Tuesday as Ryan Brun described how he lured the little girl to a vacant apartment at the complex where he worked with a picture of her lost skate, then molested and killed her and dumped her body in a trash compactor. Use a razor that I use for the carpeting and cutting caulk glue off the sinks and stuff and cut her on her neck. Ryan Brunn wore a bulletproof vest and was closely guarded by sheriff's deputies when he made his court appearance. But now prison officials say he killed himself just 48 hours later here in a prison cell. And it is standard procedure if there is a death inside the prison that the GBI steps in for the investigation. GBI is saying that they hope to do an autopsy tomorrow. At that point, they might have more information on how Ryan Brunn died. We're live at, in Jackson, Georgia. Justin Gray, Fox 5 News. It certainly is curious how this could have happened. Justin, thank you. Now, residents of the River Ridge Apartments where Brunn kidnapped and murdered little Jurelli's, they're responding to his apparent suicide. Brunn worked there as a maintenance man. And Fox News' George Franco also spoke to Jurelli's mother tonight. He joins us live with that part of the story. George? Tom and Amanda, Urelli Rivera's mother told me that the suicide of Ryan Brunn brings a sense of justice to her family. But a number of residents at this apartment complex told me that he took the coward's way out. He's gone now. And I just wish he had been kept around to serve his sentence. Although I believe in the death penalty. Lori Graff lives in the same building where Ryan Brunn, the former maintenance man here, confessed in court to luring seven-year-old Jurelis Rivera into a vacant apartment, then murdering her and putting her body in the trash dumpster. Jurelis' mother, Jocelyn, told me on the phone that Brunn's suicide brings a sense of justice to her family. She says he did what he did. Now his family knows what their son did and the pain he caused. And now that Brun is gone? He took the coward's way out. Angie Knowles, who tells us Urelli's often played with her little dog, reflected on Brun's confession, especially how he tried to avoid detection. I was just so terrified and scared that I wanted to go home and tell her mom or dad on me. He killed her because he was afraid of what her parents would do, coward. And then he kills himself not to have to live his life in prison. He was a coward. Several people here told us they wished the 20-year-old Brun would have served his life sentence in prison. That's what we were hoping for. What's that? That he would have a nice long life in prison being a target. 
And Yureli Rivera's mother told me that she no longer lives at this apartment complex. A couple of other residents who lived in the same building where the little girl was murdered told us they're on their way out as well. They say not because they're afraid of living here. They say they just can't bear the burden of living in, in that same complex where the little girl was murdered, even if her killer, Ryan Braun, is now dead. Live in Canton tonight, I'm George Franco, Fox 5 News. Easy to understand why. George, thanks. Meantime, Canton Police Chief Jeff Lance resigned today in the wake of an independent review revealing his department made mistakes in the search for Urelli's Rivera. The 17-page report says Rivera was likely already dead by the time Canton Police received the initial missing child report, and nothing could have been done immediately to prevent the seven-year-old's death. But it says if another missing child report were handled in the same manner, Canton police may indeed miss an opportunity to save a victim's life.